are part of a, a coherent whole when you see how the dots connect. Now, um, Donald Trump, he was elected not because of what he is and not because of what he'll do, but because of a public perception, at least among a great number of Americans, a public perception of what he is and what he will do. And, um, well, reality is dawning already. He's gone back on prosecuting uh, Hillary Clinton for extraordinary levels of criminal activity and corruption and much more. He's going back on climate change being a hoax. Uh, he's... Uh, uh, condemned the so-called alt-right uh, media that essentially got him elected. And um, he's uh, going back on his Muslim ban. And he is apparently going to produce an economic package. Sits back in amazement, can't believe it struggling with a shock that will benefit the very rich and make them very much richer. He really has only one um, area left already. I mean, he's not even in office yet where he can produce what he said he would do. And that is not to appoint um, heads of defense and secretary of state from a pool of people apparently being considered that are warmongering, let's go to war with Russia, let's continue business as usual in terms of overseas imposition of American will through military means. We, we can only hope that he will be, even him, though it must take some, it must take something, that even him um, will be too embarrassed to appoint those sort of people um, to the Defence Department and the State Department after what he uh, has said about improving relations with Russia and um, not wanting to um, have uh, the regime change of President Assad in uh, Syria as uh, a non-negotiable must be, which is fundamental to bringing an end to that US, UK, NATO members manipulated catastrophe, which is masquerading as a people's revolution in Syria. And um, interesting that uh, Trump uh, has uh, already uh, spoken out against the so-called alt-right. And, you know, um, <laughs> will people never learn? What politicians do and con men and liars, sorry, I repeat myself, is they tell they are their electorate that which they have to get to vote for them, They're that part of society that will uh, vote for them, never mind the ones that won't. They have to tell that uh, potential support what it wants to hear. And if Trump was going to get elected, he had to get this increasingly uh, um, vast uh, number of people, massively uh, increasing number of people, who get their um, information overwhelmingly through what's become known as the alternative media. People who are sick of being lied to by the, uh, the mainstream, 
decade after decade after decade. And so what Trump did is told them what they wanted to hear. So it was um, the climate change hoax, it was uh, um, going for the economic system um, and um, sorting out the Federal Reserve and, and all these things that um, people in the alternative media uh, want to hear. But now, of course, reality is dawning because he's going back on one after the other. And uh, if he goes back, uh, we, we hope he won't. We hope he, he, he will be too embarrassed uh, to do it. But if he goes back on um, his pledges for foreign policy and puts war hawks in the key positions, then um, there is, before he comes to power, there is nothing left, basically, of what he said he would do. And it, it's a head shaker for me that um, significant um, um, swathes of the so-called alternative media in the United States uh, should be uh, supporting uh, Trump in the belief that he was going to do what they wanted him to do. And, of course, all we're seeing is a repeat of what happened with Obama and, 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 and the other side of this ludicrous political uh, so-called spectrum. He came in, he was going to be the great new uh, political messiah of change and transformation he wasn't going to be like George Bush before him. He wasn't going to uh, be a warmonger. He was going to be about fairness and justice and all these things. And uh, of course, you would take it as a gimme that the first black president would be good for black people in America. Didn't work out so well, did it? The why is simple. Um, he was just the first black president frontman president for a hidden hand cabal that had uh, used up to this point um, white men, <laughs> front men in the White House. So it was business as usual. But there was a difference, you see, and this is very, very significant in this psychological game that is going on, because it's all, it's all a mind game. Remember during the Bush administration when he was using the excuse of the um, completely uh, um, internally created 9-11 uh, to justify going into Iraq, etc. Um, there was a very strong um, anti-war movement started to build um, in the United States. And it was made up of what people uh, are now calling and call themselves progressives. I'll, I'll get to that later on. Then Obama comes in, the darling, the messiah of the progressives, and continues business as usual uh, with what's happened in Libya, for instance, what's happened in uh, Syria, and the extraordinary levels of death and destruction that his um, policies, in league, not least with Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, um, have um, visited upon the uh, so deeply tragic uh, Middle East. Where's been the anti-war movement in the Obama years? Hmm? Where is it? Nowhere. Why? Because when you put your faith in this Messiah president, this Mr. Progressive president, then uh, well, a number of things happen. First of all, you can't or you don't want to admit to yourself you've been had. And thus, what you would condemn Bush for, rightly before, you keep your mouth shut in terms of Obama, even though he's doing the same things. And so... What we're seeing now is the same, but at the other polarity. We're having um, the so-called um, alt-right and 
those parts of the alternative media um, that supported Trump um, already uh, privately and even some, to be fair, publicly aghast at the way he's going back on everything so fast as well. I mean, oh. um, anyway, but some are now already defending him for going back on what he said he would do. Why are they defending him? <laughs> for the same reason that the progressives went quiet and the anti-war movement went quiet once Obama came in doing the same things that Bush had done. And um, alt-right, this is the, this new phrase for the alternative right-wing media as opposed to the mainstream right-wing media. But, you know, I started out doing what I do now. Basically, before there was an alternative media, there was virtually nothing there. The old radio station here and there. And you had to get this information out through books or by tramping around from place to place, talking to next to nobody, because nobody was really interested in those days. It wasn't an alternative media. Um, and it's worth, and I think it's important now, for the alternative media or cause itself that to actually take a breath in the light of current events and just reevaluate what it's there for and, and why it, it, it came into existence in the first place. Because if you, um, if you identify with a political position, whether it's right or left, whether it's Republican or Democrat, whether it's Labour or Conservative, or any, any other these uh, political polarities anywhere in the world, then from where I'm sitting, you are not part of the alternative media. You are just mainstream light, if that in some cases now. The alternative media came into existence originally to point out that the whole right, center, left political paradigm is a gigantic hoax. It's a hoax because in the shadows, all these different apparently uh, um, alternative political uh, persuasions are actually masks on the same face of a force in the shadows. And that's why, whether it's a left uh, government or a right government, essentially the same things happen and the world goes in the same direction. It was to point out that the system is rigged and you will never change anything through the political system because the political system is actually there and structured to stop anything changing for the better of the people, to stop anything changing that stops this incessant direction of the world to, to global fascism from continuing. So there is no such thing as an alt-right, an alternative media um, that calls itself right. Just as there's no such thing as a alternative media that calls itself left or center or progressive or any of it. Because these are all tags and names and labels for basically the same thing in terms of ultimately what's controlling them. And so the alternative media needs to, um, needs to look at itself. The genuine alternative media that is um, exposing the way things work rather than taking political positions within the structure of the way things work. And um, it needs to um, make sure that um, it doesn't get pulled into this uh, political nonsense that significant parts of the alternative media 
have been pulled into. Then there's this thing coming up now more and more and more in the last few days since the Trump election. And it's called fake news. Well, the ironies are not lost. This is the idea that Trump got elected because of fake news from alternative sources um, on the internet, social media and all this stuff. The irony, there are many, but one of the major ones is that the mainstream media is pushing this about fake news, as are the politicians, of course. Um, when, if you want the home of fake news, decade after decade after decade, then just go to the alternative media. Uh, sorry, the, the mainstream media. Um, although the alternative is involved in fake news as well as I'll come to in parts of it. If you... Um, if you look at the even the, the leaked emails um, in terms of uh, Clinton uh, and the um, the way the media was working with her to her benefit and to um, manipulate the perceptions of the population for that same media now to come out and start saying we must in effect start censoring the internet because of fake news. It's, it's, it's extraordinary. Uh, but of course, the genuine alternative media has and continues to make a fantastic contribution to the circulation of information and exposure of the system and that which serves the system in all its forms. Um, which is making an impact upon the political system and on people's awareness of the world as it really is. And so, of course, they want to label things um, in a way that uh, targets the alternative media. So it's all fake news. No, it's not. Actually, it's the best journalism on planet Earth comes from the alternative media. However, as I said um, with a little, what do they call them, Freudian slips, when I said alternative instead of mainstream, um, that actually was very relevant because it's no good either, the alternative media sticking its nose in the air um, and looking down on the mainstream and then having very significant swathes of it operating and acting in the same way the mainstream does. Let's not... Um, fall into this black and white trap that the mainstream media is fake news but the alternative media is all, all of it oh no it's the truth no it's not there's a load of old bollocks comes out through what calls itself the alternative media we, ha we, ha we, we have um, websites many websites that call themselves um, alternative media platforms that blatantly put out fake news that they've made up. You you have um, a situation where you, you they they put out a headline designed to make you click on it, so that you'll add to their advertising revenue. And when um, you um, when you go to the text, having now added to their advertising, the text in absolutely no way justifies the headline. It's called clickbait. That's the alternative. Um, there, there's a, a, a one um, website, actually, uh, again, ironically, run by a former webmaster of davidike.com uh, some time ago, um, that not only uh, operates with the, uh, the, the clickbait uh, technique, but actually uses a named writer that doesn't actually exist. And they call themselves alternative. Now, if you want to discredit the genuine alternative media that's making and has made such a fantastic contribution to the population's awareness of what's happening and it's not being told about, then all you do is you pick out the fake news people. You pick out the clickbaiters. You pick out people 
who are using fake writers. And you say that's the alternative media. It's not. But that's the way propaganda works. So it's important that the genuine alternative media doesn't sit around and just let this go unchallenged, but, but constantly highlights to people where these clickbait sites are, where these um, uh, fake news sites are. Uh, and, and, and the alternative media uh, cleans up its own house. And please, those that have supported Trump in the alternative media and taken a political position, please sit down, take a deep breath and have another look at it. It's about the system, exposing the system, exposing the rigged system, which means it doesn't really matter who comes in in terms of front people, because the system's in control, whoever's there. That's what, that's what we were created to expose. Now, progressives. Progressives. Uh, um, th these are people, it's, 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 it's a word used in America, it's being used in Britain and more widely now. Progressives are those um, you, you can you can pretty much recognize them because they have big hearts all the way down their arm on their sleeve oh, I'm so kind and I'm so good look at me look at what I'm doing I'm such a kind loving person right let's um see one of the the, the words that is put together with progressive almost like um, they interchangeable terms is liberal in fact um, in in America uh, it's conservative or it's liberal it's Republican or Democrat so this word liberal is thrown around all the time in fact it's thrown around very liberally um, so three definitions liberal favoring reform open to new ideas and tolerant of the ideas and behavior of others not bound by traditional thinking broad-minded well i mean that's pretty much the direction i'm coming from um if you want to use the dictionary definition now progressive which is supposed to be liberal but uh isn't much of it anyway progressive favoring or advocating progress but who decides what's progress? Change, improvement, who decides what's improvement? And reform, as opposed to wishing to maintain things as they are, especially in political matters. Well, there's nothing in that definition that, that you could call liberal. It's just wanting change, uh, etc. Now, this is interesting. This is the definition of fascism. A tendency toward or actual exercise of strong autocratic or dictatorial control. Now, when I look at the behavior of so many people that call themselves progressives, it's that last definition that I see. We have... Um, People, um, uh, well, it's obviously much of it has been uh, generated and coordinated out of the shadows. But we've had these protests against Trump um, that um, he, he, he shouldn't be present, that um, things should happen to, to, to stop that happening. We've had violence on the streets. Now, these people call themselves progressives. Yet, if Clinton had have won in the same way that Trump did, that would have been to these same people. Um, the people have spoken. It's democracy. Instead, we've had these progressives um, holding up um, uh, love uh, Trump's hate banners with fury and hatred on their faces. I mean, anyone got a mirror might be helpful. 
These people are so self-deluded. They don't see that their behaviour mirrors that which they claim to oppose. And so we, we, we're we having um, these protests and then we're having um, Clinton supporters, progressives, crying and in need of therapy and stuff because, because a, a woman who, who so believes in the rights of women that she takes millions from the royal family of Saudi Arabia, which you may have noticed has a problem with women's rights, but someone who is one of the most deeply, deeply corrupt people ever to appear in American politics, and my God, think of the competition, has not won the presidency of the United States. Ah! Therapy! Instead of looking at what is wrong and what is behind a system called democracy and politics that offers you a disaster or a catastrophe in terms of Clinton or Trump. And look at some of the people, one of the major people that fund these progressive organizations. George Soros, Zionist oligarch billionaire. Who was, who was someone that put tens of millions into the um, vote for Trump campaign? Sheldon Adelson, Zionist oligarch, billionaire. Does anyone really think in their terminal naivety that those two people don't ultimately answer to the same? masters. So why would you have massive funding of progressive movements and ma massive funding supporting someone that progressives um, demonize Trump for president? We come back to where we started. Divide and rule. George Soros and his Open Society Foundations and all the networks that go out from them um, was majorly involved in triggering the Arab Spring, which was presented by the fake news media as a spontaneous people's revolution in the Arab world. It was just a front to allow um, Western, not least American and British funded, armed, trained rebels, mercenaries, to um, start a proxy war by America and the UK and other NATO countries against targets in the Middle East like Gaddafi and Assad. But they said, oh, no, it's a people's revolution. It's just a front for a proxy war. Because if you keep invading countries over and over again, um, openly, like in Iraq, then people are going to go, what's going on? So you, you, you sell it as a people's revolution. Um, and quite a few months ago now, um, there was something in Washington, D.C. called... Democracy Spring, where progressives um, went to Washington to um, protest about uh, billionaires and their influence in politics, uh, as if their um, poster boy, um, Barack Obama, wasn't funded massively to record-breaking um, degrees at the time by the same people. And another irony, a number of the organizations that took part in Democracy uh, Spring are funded by George Soros, a Zionist oligarch, billionaire, who, who does springs rather well, it seems.
what you have is um, people of a certain persuasion, say the right. They get their information from the right-wing press and what's become known as the alt-right. And then you get people of a progressive persuasion and they get their information from the left-wing press or the so-called liberal press, or the progressive press. And just as in politics and political parties, left, right, centre, whoops, controlled by the same people, so are the left-wing press and so are the right-wing press. They're just different masks, once again, on the same face. So all these uh, groups within politics, whether it's the right or progressives or centre, they're all getting their information about the world basically from the same sources. And the only literal alternative to that is going to the genuine alternative media that's dismantling the system in people's minds by exposing what it is and not taking a left-right position within the, the system of control. And that's why they're targeting the genuine alternative media now through these fake news, anything but alternative websites, and through those who've taken a political position in the Trump election. And uh, there's something that's uh, a term that's come to be used more and more now. It's called identity politics. And it's time for all persuasions in the political spectrum and those in the alternative media that are not, in my view, very alternative, to grow up and to stop playing this identity political game that's allowing the few to dictate to the many, incessantly, ongoing. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, I'm gay, okay, okay, I, I'm gay, uh, not me, but I'm um, talking about this um, gay identity. Uh, there's lots of gay people who um, uh, are not like this, but there is a, a gay um, uh, mentality that, that looks at politics from a gay perspective. What, what, what about gays? because their identity is that they're gay. Then you have um, transgender identity politics, which is all under this progressive wing. Um, and then you have um, Jewish, Muslim, Christian identity uh, politics, which says, um, I, um, I'm, I'm this, this is my label, so I'm going to vote from a position that best suits my identity. It's the politics of me, me, me. Identity politics. First of all, that is a godsend to anyone who wants to divide a rule. But it also means that simple things like what is fair, what is just, what is right, by all people just go missing questions like that what is the fair thing to do here not what is the best thing to do for my identity and my identity politics what is the fair thing to do here in this situation what is the just thing to do in this situation and there's another part of this identity politics, which is which is money. What's the what's the fair thing to do? What's the just thing to do in terms of the financial system? It's that no one is without a home. No one is hungry. And no one is allowed to fall below a certain basic um, level of, of, of life. But what does identity politics do in terms of the finance? It says, which one will make me more money than I already have and I have more than I could, I could spend in a hundred lifetimes?
all this identity stuff, all this me, 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 what's in it for me, what will they do for me, has made us lose perspective of those simple things, those simple foundations of making judgments and introducing changes. What is fair? What is just? For all people concerned. And, you know, when I talk about progressives of the left, there are still some genuine people um, there that do come from that perspective and do value things like freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Because when we come back to this definition of fascism, liberal and progressive, but particularly when we come back to this this definition of fascism, that's what political correctness is. It's the arrogant belief that you can dictate what people can say, even eventually what they can think, because you're right, and therefore anyone who has a different opinion must be wrong. There's no such thing as a different opinion to a progressive of this extreme nature, because they're right. Therefore, you've got a different opinion, you must be wrong. And, and because you've got a different opinion and you're wrong, what value is there in allowing you to speak? It's fascism. It's manipulation of the population, the target population, to silence itself. So those manipulating the target population don't have to. And the great drivers of this politically correct fascism this destruction and deletion of basic freedom of thought, freedom of, uh, of speech and expression. The so-called progressives. Oh, I'm so kind. Look at me. All it is, is, is George Orwell's 1984 Newspeak. All those decades ago, he predicted this. And here's the progressives who are actually behind it. They're behind the, the hoax of global warming. So no one can have... Uh, a, a, another view exposing that otherwise they have to be silenced and you know progressives of this kind and my god they're growing do you know who put Trump in power eh? you did you know who won the Brexit vote that you didn't want uh, to go the way it did you did do you know what's um, driving people into um into, into parties that are, 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 are against immigration in Europe uh, of the scale that's happening? You are. And I'll tell you why. Because you are the new establishment, the new authority, you have uh, made it impossible, increasingly impossible anyway, not quite, try it with me, for people to express how they feel. If, if what happened with Trump, it, as I said in a recent video cast, it was a primal scream for help from vast numbers of people who knew Clinton was business as usual and they just hoped that maybe Trump wasn't. It's a vain hope, but that's where they were coming from. And you know why? Because they have not had a voice. They've not been able to express what's happening to them economically, what's happening to their families, what's happening to their communities. Because you, uh, progressives, won't even let them articulate themselves. Why? Because you don't debate anymore, because you've got nothing to debate with. You're a, you, you, you are vacuous in your, in your um, evidence that you put forward to support what you're imposing on everyone else. Instead of debate, what we have are abuse and slogans. You vote for Trump, you are by definition a racist, you're homophobic, you're anti-transgender. What, everybody? If you vote to come out of the 
uh, fascist, communist, bureaucratic dictatorship called the European Union. You are racist, homophobic, anti-transgender. This is what's gone on. And if, if you're concerned about vast numbers of people coming um, from uh, the Middle East and um, North Africa and changing the nature of your community, uh, you cannot speak out about that. Why? Because you are racist. Oh, and I bet if you're racist, you're also homophobic and anti-transgender. This is the fascist uh, dictatorship of the so-called progressives that has led to where we are now. And you, ironically, are out on the streets protesting about it through organizations funded by George Soros, protesting about what you have created. So I'll say to the still genuine people of what is called the left, people who are genuinely liberal, you have to, if we're going to change this, take the meaning of what you stand for back from these fascist progressives and dictators who daily serve the very system they say they oppose. I'll say this to the genuine alternative media, and there are many in that, where the best journalism on the planet goes on currently. We need to take back what the alternative media really means and what it was created for. Not to take political positions. Uh, within the system that we're exposing. And certainly not to put out clickbait headlines that add to the advertising revenue and produce stories written by named writers who don't exist. We can't look the other way for that stuff anymore. And perhaps, as the truth dawns about Donald Trump, increasingly fast to his supporters and even now I'm sure former supporters some of them we need to go to the next stage of this awakening you know Brexit voting for the perception of what people thought Trump was is evidence that more and more people are sick and tired of being dictated to by this system of control. But we need to go to the next stage of this awakening and realize that the political system is not the way to do it. Ceasing en masse to cooperate with our own enslavement is the way to do it outside the political nonsense and irrelevance in the governments of the world. Because whether you are left or whether you are right, Barack Obama and Donald Trump are not messiahs of change. They are simply different divides in the same rule.